Hello and welcome to Start Select, the show that drives a great big snowplow up to your house and delivers a great big fun bag of gaming joy. There's a little game called Killzone 2 launching in a couple of weeks, and we met up with the game's composer in this edition of Start Select. Also coming up on this show, we polled the great and the good of the gaming world to find out their tips for the coming year. And stick around for the end of the show when we'll be giving away copies of the Sega Mega Drive collection on Xbox 360. We'll also be announcing the winners of last week's Rise of the Argonauts competition, but first, let's check out the music of Killzone 2. My people, sons and daughters of Elgan, this much I vow. The history of these days will be written in blood. By crushing the armies of our enemy, by seizing the weapons they thought to turn against us, we were fighting for our very existence. But if there are those who would deny us peace, refuse us our rightful place in the universe, then we will unleash such terrible vengeance that generations yet unborn will cry out in anguish. A spokesman for ISO. My name is Joris the Man. Uh, I'm a composer and sound designer, and I was the composer on Killzone 2. It's often said, you know, if, it, if the score is really good, then people don't notice it. Or, and I don't always think that's true, because if you look at people like, you know, John Williams or Hans Zimmer or people like that, you definitely notice their score, you know. They, they almost, their score almost makes the film in a, in a certain way, and I think it can be similar with games. I mean, I like to think that if you have a really solid theme um, in a game that it really does add something to it and people go, all right, I recognize that, that's a recognizable theme. Well, in terms of kind of giving the series a signature, it was about creating certain themes that I could repeat throughout the franchise. So a very big part of the music is the Hellgast March, which is kind of features in all the games. It's kind of the opening piece that you see on the main menu. And that's kind of a signature theme that runs along all the games. We, we ended up recording the, uh, the cutscene music at Abbey Road, which is quite an amazing experience. Um, we had about 30 minutes of, of cutscene music, and you know, that covers kind of the, the main intro sequence that I think a lot of people might have already seen on YouTube and things like that. Um, and then some of the major kind of story points. And um, the reason that we kind of wanted to record that music live is because that's really where a lot of the kind of emotional impact of the story happens. You know, when you're playing the game and when you're kind of running through the levels, uh, there's a different kind of emotion uh, happening, which is all about, you know, shooting people and destruction and, you know, just running and gunning, so to speak. But it's the cutscenes really where the story comes to life and where some of the certain character traits come to life. And so to kind of help that process and really kind of give that a bit of emotional backbone, uh, we decided to record it live and that ended up happening at Abbey Road. Um, it was an amazing experience because you're working with some of the best musicians in the world. I mean, they are incredible. Having recorded in Moscow and having recorded in Prague, I kind of have a little bit of comparison as to what, what the difference in, in quality is. And it's bigger than I actually anticipated it would be. When you're working in the game, you're talking about the Hellgast and the ISA, and you're talking about Radak and Fusari, and you're totally in that world, then to you it makes complete sense. When you actually try to explain to someone else what the game is about, and what, you know, the Hellgast, yeah, they're kind of these red-eyed, orange glowing, you know, space Nazis, then people kind of look at you and go, okay, yeah, that's great. <laughs> You've got to be in that world to really to have it make sense. Um, what we did do and what um, Jonathan Williams, who was conducting, uh, would do is explain some of the storyline behind it and say, well, in this scene this is happening or that character is dying or, you know, something significant that's happening in the music that would kind of illustrate them and say, all right, okay, because this character dies at that bar, we know that we really need to kind of give it a little bit of a push on that one or a little bit more vibrato just to give that extra bit of emotional tension. I hope it kind of serves as an inspiration because I think it really does add something to it. And obviously I would say that because I'm a composer and you know, and I think recording orchestrally is, is absolutely magnificent, but I do really think it, it, it kind of brings it to another level because it's a certain level of quality that, um, yeah, that live musicians bring to it that I don't think you, well, I know you can't get with MIDI. And having done both, I know how far you can go with MIDI. Um, and it, that is pretty far, but when it, when it really comes to kind of lyrical dramatic pieces then there really is, is no substitute. 
Um, but at, th at the same time, I'm seeing a, a kind of an increasing trend in the games industry where more and more games are kind of going the orchestral routes, and it's really nice to see where you really see some unique voices coming through. You know, I've just um, yeah, recently had to play quite a few games, and um, among them Fable 2 and Dead Space and Assassin's Creed, and, and all I thought all those games had absolutely magnificent scores. Where you know, with a game like Dead Space, where you really see someone going out on a limb to try something different and really kind of you know approach it musically in, a, in quite a different way. You know, it's got a lot of kind of orchestral techniques that are not uncommon in the film world and in the concert world, but I haven't really heard much of that stuff in, in games yet. Uh, and that's really nice to see. And, uh, and also, somewhat older games like Bioshock, which I thought had a, an absolutely fantastic score and just fit so well in the game. Um, you know, where it's just really nice to play through a game and not think oh, I'm going to turn this music off because it's annoying, but actually think, wow, I'm really looking forward to what this guy's done for the next bit of game. So, um, yeah, I think, I think in general, the games industry is in a, in a pretty good shape and I hope it kind of continues in that way that um, people will use more orchestral music because I think, yeah, it adds a whole, whole different dimension to the gameplay experience. As we rise again from the ruins of our cities, they will know Helgan belongs to the Helgans. <laughs>